natural actions, as one could guess, affect the flow of the logic. Most flow control actions fall into one of two categories, loops or conditions. Loops enable running a series of actions more than once, without the need for making copies of them. This is useful when wanting to, for example, create 20 falling rocks without duplicating the rock creation logic. Without the flow control actions, the rocks create object action would have to be duplicated 20 times to create this effect. The second type of conditions are sort of mini events. As you may remember, I refer to events as when questions. Collision event is when two objects collide. Create event is when an object is created, etc. Conditions help us refine the when question and create more logic flow. We will use our current game to demonstrate the usefulness of this. Just before I started babbling about condition actions, we wanted to add logic that will manage the number of attempts the player may have with his hero fish, or in other words, lives. So far, we have added a variable that keeps track of every time an animated fish is created. By nowhere do we make use of this information. Currently, the action and number of sprites event take care of creating a new fish every time it is destroyed. Instead, we would like to make the fish reappear only three times when the player's lives run out. For that purpose, we will use the if action. The dialog contains a single text box for input. This is where we will place our condition. Conditions are very similar to the expressions that we were introduced to in a previous tutorial. Just like in expressions, we can use numbers, arithmetic operators, and built-in properties. The only difference between the two is the way they're evaluated. Expressions are used for calculation and return a numeric value. 1, 2, 500,000, all of these are valid and results of an expression. Conditions, on the other hand, return a Boolean value, either true or false. To achieve this, all conditions must contain a comparing operator. Writing this in the text box results in a valid condition that will check if 1 is greater than 3. This will naturally always be false and is not very interesting. This condition will compare one to one and will always be true. Take note that we duplicate the equal sign to make it valid in the expression. One is not enough. So far the conditions have not been of much interest. They always evaluate to the same value and are not affected by anything that's going on in the game. For the purpose of our game, we would like to write a condition that will check if the number of creative fish is either equal to or smaller than three. This will mean that we have yet to create four hero fish and the player still deserves another chance. Pressing control space, we will use the autocomplete feature that was introduced to us in a previous tutorial. Notice that our global variable, fish count, appeared in the list. Here we selected it and typed the rest of the condition. As you can see, I used the combined comparing operator which simply means the condition will be true if the fish count either equals to or is lesser than 3. Very good. We have our condition, but as you can see, an error was added. The if action and most other flow control actions are container actions. This simply means that they may contain actions inside them. In the if conditions case, this is even mandatory. Simply placing the action doesn't really do much good because the only actions that are affected by it are the ones it contains. We'll select the create action using the mouse and move it into the if conditions node. Let's do that using the keyboard shortcuts. Actions may be reordered by pressing the control key and using the arrows. Keeping my finger on the control key, I press down and reorder the create object action to be located right after the if condition. As you can see in the error list, this is still not enough. Simply placing the action after the condition does not have any effect on the action. To achieve this, the action must be moved inside the if condition. We will do that by pressing right while keeping the control key down. This can also be done using the mouse. Let's run the game.
here. I'll collide with an enemy again, again, and again. As you can see, our beloved fish is gone. Hmm, this is still not good enough because enemies are still being created and the game plays on as though nothing has happened. This is exactly why we have the end the game action. Let's leave it with the default settings and run our game once more. No, this is not what we wanted. Game over is displayed, meaning our end game action was called. Let's check why that happened. I know why this happened. As you can see, the end game action will be executed every time the event is triggered. To fix this, let us use another flow control action, the else action, and reposition the end game action within it. Else actions can only be placed immediately after if actions and enable us to act when a condition is false without writing another condition. For us, this would mean that when collision occurred with an enemy fish, the value of fish count variable will be compared to 3. Should the value be lesser or equal, a new fish will be created. Otherwise, the game will end. I would like to stress that the two actions will never execute within the same collision. Either the actions containing the if or the else are executed, but never both. Let's run our game again. Here, I'll collide with an enemy. Again. Again. And again. Very good. Game over is displayed as expected. While not being of much interest when testing the game in the simulator, it is very important to place the end action in all ending situations of our game. When encountered in the final version of the game, the about and high score screens may be displayed and the player will be sent back to the game's main menu. Let's save it as MoFish5. This ends today's lesson. In our next tutorial, we will learn to take advantage of the last object type, the capability.